I'll call this uh, mm -hmm. District of Clearwater regular council meeting for Wednesday, September 21st at 2 p.m. ish. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging we are fortunate to be gathering together today on the unceded, unceded territory of the Simp people who have been caretakers of this land since time immemorial. We do have two late items to add to the agenda. Uh, the first one will be the financial plan policy for adoption at 18.3 uh, on your agenda. And the second one will be um, the Economic Development Officer Report for your info as 18.4 on your agenda. So are there anything, is there anything else anybody would like to add to the agenda? Seeing none, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda as with additions? Moved by Councillor McKenzie, seconded by Councillor Frizzle. All those in favor? Uh, there it takes care of that. Adoption of the minutes. Uh, are there any errors or omissions in the minutes? Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor McKenzie, seconded by Councillor Frizzle. You guys are going to be on the agenda a lot because there's not very many of us here. Uh, all those in favor? And that passes. And the delegations are up next. But if Councillor Taylor is ready or just wants to reach behind her and get a a copy of the agenda so she can take over. I will hand the chair over and leave at this point uh, because I have urgent business that can't be delayed. I should be about 35 minutes max, maybe 40 and be back. But until then, work your way through it. You've got about 20 minutes with the uh, presentations, 50 minutes with the presentations to get up to speed. So I will now turn the chair over okay. to Councillor Taylor as her position as acting mayor. Thank you. I will be back as quick as I can. Thank you, Matt Blackwell. Okay, so um, we will invite up our first delegation, which is the Clearwater Men's Shed. Great, come forward. Good afternoon, Council. I'm here this afternoon to represent Clearwater Menchet. On October, the first week of October, we will have been in operation for one year. So I thought I would come today and just give a brief overview of what we've accomplished what we've accomplished this first year. I'll just I'll just name a few projects. It uh, when we started, we we wanted to do a few projects. With the, with the community, community projects. And it, uh, that has seemed to been uh, what's taken most of our time this year. And it's been, been really great. So I'd just like to go through a couple, if I may. The first project we did was the wind phone and that was for the for a hospice society. So we built the wind phone and we installed that on the path behind the hospital. And that was done quite a, with, probably half a dozen different guys. We got together and we did this project. It took us quite a while. And then another project we had done was we built uh, a table and, and kind of a lunch counter, I guess, in the staff room here at the DOC. Uh, we built the blender bike that many of you have seen down at the farmer's market. That's an ongoing project. There's always issues that come up with that. We rebuilt a garden bench for the for the forest view, where they, they have a, a nice bench right out where they, they can sit and watch the chickens. They really enjoy doing that. We presently have two very large boxes of wooden toys that we've built, and they will be going to the food bank. The one box is, is through the, the recent motorcycle toy run. They asked if we could build some toys for the food bank. So they will be obviously going to the food bank. And then we built another box of toys just for, for something to do, which will also be going to the, the food bank. And, and as we've done all these projects, we've been doing a lot of our own things too. Things we bring things in that we want to fix, or someone will bring in something and then you know the guys will get together and and we'll all get together and help them fix it, whether it's a generator or whatever it may be. It's a lot of different, different projects like that. 
So we've been very busy this year. And yeah, I guess most of the time has been with the community things, but we've, uh, there's usually four or five projects going at the same time with different people doing. There's some carvers, we've had carvers that have had the works and at the art show. And... and I don't have too much more. So I would like at this time on behalf of the Manshed to thank the district for the opportunity that has been given to us for this first year. And we look forward to future opportunities with the district. So again, thank you very much on behalf of all the guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ray. Um, yeah, and, and it's great to get the update. Great to hear that it's going so well. Uh, does anyone from council have any questions for Ray? Yeah, Councillor Frizzle. question, but I just wanted to say that I did go down there uh, last week, I guess it was, and just chatted with the guys and they've got a, a really nice setup there. They, it's really, really quite cozy. There's lots of place to work, lots of place to visit. And um, it's just become their place, you can just tell. And it's just nice to see that it's been, it's really well established now. And it's good to see. Go ahead. Thank you. Any, any... Yeah, I just want to thank you guys for everything you're doing down there. Uh, heard a lot of great things about it. The blender bike my kid is absolutely blown away from. So <laughs> I've never seen it in person. But, um, and another thing, yeah, I, just Councillor Frizzle said, I'd like to check out the schedule and maybe come down and pay you guys a visit too and just see what's going on. And I think it's a great idea. Thank you for everything. We do have a lot of people that would drop in. You know, we had a, a person come in with a fly with a bat to pick up and he needed it cut to a certain size to get for his campers. We got out the tools and we cut, cut it all up for him. He was happy. We had one lady come in and she just wanted a whole drill piece of wood so she could hang it. And it's just, it's just ongoing all the time. Now. And right now we do have two benches, two adjustable stools that we just put together for hospice. It's just, it's just ongoing. And the guys really, really enjoy it. It's just, they're just having a great time. And I'm sure the wives are happy to have a lot of the houses for the good time. What is your schedule there? We are Tuesdays and Thursdays, nine till approximately. Okay. Oh, the full days down there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, right on. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Councillor Frizzle. Oh. Go ahead. Okay, Councillor Sim, we'll take your question. Uh, no, it's really just a comment. I know that when I had dropped off the actual wind phone and I didn't know what you were going to be able to accomplish with it and what you did, it was just it was just such an asset. And I think that that speaks to all of your projects. It just lends to a real authenticity and care. And uh, each of your projects, it, it, it's really felt and um, just really reverberate. So thank you um, a million times over that you're just creating such a dynamic environment that's so welcoming. Thank you. Councillor Frizzle. I also just wanted, and it ties into what Councillor Sim said that the Wellsbury Country Senior Society is buying a bench and it will be going at the wind phone. You know, with the supply issues, it was late this year, so it'll probably won't be here till October. So it'll go in in the spring, and so we look forward to just sort of having those two together and making it a really good place for people to go and just remember their people. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, one question for me, actually, Ray. Um, how many people do you have that, that come on a regular we have basis? Twenty-five paid members. Oh wow! Yeah. And wow. we have people that drop in every once in a while. That's great. That's been very well received. Personally, I've made a lot of new friends. People, you know, we have new people in the community that have only been here for six months that have come down and joined just to have the opportunity. That's such a diverse group of individuals now. I don't think there's anything we couldn't fix or build and get together. It's just, it's just great. <laughs> I just wanted to share this that um, I know that one woman in the in the community has been wanting to get her husband to go down there for a long time and he's yeah 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 but he wouldn't go and then you were down here at the music mm -hmm. night 
and he actually had faces to put to the men's sheds and he chatted with you and, and, now, and now he's going down there. Yeah. So sometimes it's just getting out a little bit more to, and it gets people out there. So that, that was good news for her and him. Well, we do also stress that you don't have to come down and work on something or just yeah. come down, sit, have coffee, have a conversation. Nelson's going to be There's no pressure. This gets him. Councillor Sim, you had another question, comment? Um, you, you just raised something in terms of, because I've been down there and it always seems like there's a buffet of food, but you've also mentioned people will stop in for a coffee. Is there anything further that you might need from council as we move into a budget session? Actually, I don't think so at this time. I think uh, we're very happy with the facility we have. And I think with we can continue working with the district with what we have, but we'll be we'll be happy. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions from council, uh, thank you, Ray. Thank you for coming, giving the update, and thank you for your leadership uh, getting this up and off the ground. Uh, an opportunity to, to speak on this. It's something that's really important to me. It wasn't when I started, but it's it's certain. That's great. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our second delegation. We've got the Clearwater Minor Hockey Association here, to Association here to talk about rapid shots. So, Brett and Elijah, did you want to come forward? Thank 
Eighteen by forty four, you said? Yeah. manager of the rapid shop
Thank you, Elijah. Thank you, Brett. Uh, questions from Council? A couple okay. of things, Sarah. Just want to clarify, this is the front corner near the bus turnaround where it comes out. Because originally, I was when it was first brought up, I can't remember when it was, I thought it was to be down the back corner of the curling parking lot. But just want to make sure that what I'm looking at in this picture is up where the bus turnaround comes around, right? And it's there's room for it there with any school right away or any of that. As far as we were told by the yard, okay. it's the main looking way, and that's doable to do that. Okay. Um, as someone who came up through minor hockey and did the Brett Goldburn School of Hard Knocks there a couple, <laughs> few different times. Uh, I think this is a great idea. I mean, minor hockey has been huge for the 30 plus years I've been here. And I really hate to see things change with that. Um, one concern I have, we're three weeks from the end of an election. We might not be coming back. We don't know who's coming back. So, you know, is this something we wait till the next term to see? I'm for it. I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, it's obviously not that quick and easy, but I support this. Um, definitely got to check some avenues for it, but being just this close to the end of the election and we could have six or seven or who knows how many more. It could be a complete new set of bases around the table. So that's just one thing to pass on you guys to take into consideration. But. Thank you, Councillor McKenzie. And any other questions, uh, Councillor Frizzle? Uh, I just want to check with Councillor Sim. Any questions, Councillor Sim? Just check. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, I wasn't able to catch a lot of the presentation, so thank you very much for the slides. I am wondering if it has been considered uh, that the rapid shot be utilized as some sort of a tourism opportunity that would offset some of the costs. Sorry, can you speak into the mic because she won't hear you? So. Sorry. Um, just one of the aspects that Elijah and I just went through. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that Elijah and I just went through were the Omaha meetings in Vernon. And not only the tourism would be a benefit, but also within our own hockey organization, there's a lot of teams from that are in Omaha, our league, that don't want to travel to Clearwater because of it's a real long drive. There's not a lot of things to do in Clearwater is what the consensus was during the meeting. And what we talked about was how this could be utilized to bring more teams into our tournaments, bring, making sure then we're able to book teams for tournaments, for league games, that there's no cancellations, that we have just an opportunity to, to use this to um, showcase our town and get more involvement in particular at the arena book more ice time uh, more kids involved and but then also in the summer months we had spoke about um, the opportunities that may present itself with tourism and having um, the sports plex open year round and that that's a bold statement but that's kind of the intent that this could be a, a gateway to getting things going as far as the summer months and utilizing it outside of just minor hockey. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McKenzie? Yeah, uh, I've never heard of this prior to being brought to council here, but I'm just wondering, is there any others in the area, in the Okanagan, BC, like just had never heard of these till you guys brought it in. That's interesting. There, there is um, actually one of the, there's a, in down in Surrey, there's a, 
a hockey shop it's called and they just put it in there for so that when kids are buying sticks they can go in there and shoot pucks with the four hundred dollar sticks now so they're around and then the other part of it is is a lot of high-end uh ncaa teams junior teams they're, they're putting them in shooting centers as to um as a as a training mechanism to help kids develop more on a higher level and actually like vancouver canucks have one in their facility um uh, so th there there's more and more of them going in and then there's actually businesses that are buying these getting them in getting a weight room getting track and field getting uh, uh all kinds of activities outside of just the hockey part of it so um there are i've visited four of them and seen the facilities that they have with them and they're they're first rate they're and they're uh they're well used so yeah, thanks Brad. so frizzle um uh, as a tourism potential would you attach a fee to it i mean you're not going to charge a fee for the hockey players obviously and that's not where i'm going but if it was used as a tourism mechanism to bring people in it could be a money maker is that is that a potential yeah i think we've chatted about that also and there would we would definitely look at having drop-in fees for other uses for locals or people not associated with minor hockey uh, whose kids aren't in it we'd probably have even maybe beer leaguers might want to try it so uh, we might even yeah a small drop-in fee for them to try to get a chance to use it and among others coming into the community so so frizzle i just you mentioned that you could use it with skates or shoes so it's on ice. So it uh, it um, it comes with synthetic ice, which is a plastic that you can uh, stand on with your skates. So it gives you the opportunity to use it as realistic as possible in a hockey situation. So yeah, or you can be on your shoes. So just want to check in, Councillor Sim. Yeah, I saw you were off mute. So <laughs> Councillor Sim. <laughs> Yeah, thanks very much. I guess what I'm wondering is, is because I think that there's big potential. And one of the things that council has done is we've, it, we've looked at um, putting into the budget $10,000 for um, an expansion to the upstairs of the sports flex. Has that, I, I if you've discussed that that's an option or not an option, but I can really see if this was incorporated into a community vision, how um hockey camps could really kick off you know and run through that whole season really driving that sport tourism in and depending on the location there are grants available through the federal government and those links have been shared uh with council and staff that this could drive that tourism sport tourism component to it is upstairs a consideration if there was to be an expansion there or is that theoretical at this point I think, uh, well, initially for us, it was a thought, but uh, it just, it was kind of beyond where, like where we were thinking we were capable of. So that's something we'd probably need the district help on. Yeah, I'm just wondering, and, and again, this would have to be something, and you can't do it in a presentation like this, but certainly to look at what you're saying is, is that there's a lot of communities that's, that have a lot of uh, teams that come into uh, their communities throughout the spring and summer. If we were to be able to set a vision that had something like this, the ice downstairs in conjunction with a training center like a gym, that gym becomes something that's available to the community. I see a bigger, bigger picture, possibly, depending on community consultation. That would definitely be ideal for us. <laughs> Thank you very uh, much. Appreciate I'm just going to add. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Just going to add like that's the rapid shot. It is what we're trying to build is more community and, and get yeah. more people involved and and 
uh, between Elijah and I, you know, one of our things is getting kids in sports and getting them active and off their phones more and being in team, team environments and being around more kids outside of their element, just specific. so we're, it's not just hockey, it's life, life skills that we're trying to and create opportunity through hockey, but the life part of the skills and, and getting kids working together and off the devices is, is kind of a, uh, a primary concern of ours. Right. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's a great motivation. Thanks. Uh, Councillor McKenzie. Yeah, just one more. Uh, I've never stepped a foot on synthetic ice. How, what's the durability like, and is this going to be something we're replacing the sheets every year to this or it's looking for input? So I have some of the stuff actually here in Clearwater. We're using it currently. Um, it's a little harder to skate on. They, they, they say it's about 10%. Um, for kids, but as adults, it's probably about 20% harder. Uh, the durability of it, um, right now, they, the stuff that I have, I'm using it on a consistent basis with skates on it. And they're, they're giving me an eight year term on it um, and because you can flip it over and use the other side. Um, having said that, I, my sheet is small. It's not uh, real big in comparison to what the, the rapid shot is. And then as far as the rapid shot goes, there's only a few areas that you actually, you don't actually do a lot of skating around on it. The, the sheet that I have, they skate all over it. So the, the high wear areas need to be replaced. Um, in the rapid shot, it's a specific area where you're shooting from. So those panels, they're, they're I say, you know, six to eight years. Um, and then you'd be flipping them over. A lot of the facilities I visited that the kids were using them, they were in shoes. Um, they were, and then that would be also part of, you know, specific age groups and stuff like that. He, the lit risk liability of trying to keep them um, in shoes is probably more beneficial than it is getting a bunch of kids with skates on. And, and um, but as far as the durability goes, I don't see a whole lot of maintenance cost with um, replacing the high use panels. Thanks, Brett. All right, I think we're done with questions. Oh, question from uh, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Acting Mayor Taylor. Um, just to clarify the ownership of the asset, the intention is to remain with Manor Hockey. Yes. Sweet. Um, maintenance of the asset is Manor Hockey's responsibility as well? Yes. And in terms of process, if council was to approve the project to go ahead, the funding for that will be Manor Hockey's responsibility or is there an ask to the District of Clearwater? So we're at the beginning here, yeah, we're saying Manor Hockey would be a major contributor uh, again, when we're looking at the numbers that are in, on that uh, build of $160,000, that's a lot to ask on minor hockey's behalf. So to say that we would be open to taking that all on, that's not really uh, feasible. So there would be outside help that would be needed and required to make something this uh, happen for the district and for Clearwater. Um, we don't really have those answers to be straight up honest with you. That's great. Okay, that's fair. Council may need to know that for budgeting purposes. That's all on the timeline. If you're intending on building in 23, um, they would need to know by May 15 and ask and decide on whether the ask will be granted by them as well. Okay. So sorry, that was May 15th. Sorry. Uh, my director finals just clarified <laughs> uh, a granting aid request will be December 31st is the deadline. So. Okay, so if there's any other questions, oh, we, we're all good. Okay, well, thank you both for coming Thanks out. Much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
So moving on, Mayor's report, I guess we'll come back to that one. Uh, so moving on to council reports, uh, Councillor Bamford is not with us today, Councillor Frizzle. Thank you, Acting Mayor Taylor. Um, I attended the Legion's Memorial to uh, Queen Elizabeth um, on Monday, which was important for me to attend because a, a woman that has served her country and her commonwealth for 70 years deserves recognition, I felt. Um, yesterday was the seniors luncheon and Sergeant Grant Simpson was in attendance and he was talking to the seniors about the scams that we all get hit with, but they are more, most vulnerable to. And some of the scams that um, are out there that haven't even hit us yet, I don't think. Um, and some that people have, there have been people in this community that have been taken for a lot of money and it's shocking what, how people can be so heartless. But it, 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 what drove it home to me was that he himself was actually scammed of $100 from his credit card. And, you know, he says if an RCMP officer can be scammed, anybody can. So always be aware and always be alert. And I just wanted to share that because it's not just about the seniors, it's about all of us. Um, today is Ray the Reader. And so um, it's very important for um, the community. Uh, they do a lot of literacy programs, um, uh, youth programs, their uh, tutoring, whatnot throughout the community. T tonight, there's a spelling bee for, for adults and it raises money for um, a lot of good things for the community. So if you um, are interested in making a donation, there is a, a table outside the door. Um, Alzheimer's workshop, I'm gonna keep pushing on that one. It's October 21st. It's very important that if you have anyone in your family or friends that um, you are um, seeing symptoms of <coughs> dementia or Alzheimer's, it's important to come to this meeting to understand the behaviors, how to communicate and uh, how to navigate what's coming up in the next years of their lives. Um, and I think that's all I have to report today. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, Councillor Haring is absent today. Councillor McKenzie. Yeah, thank you, Acting Mayor Taylor. Uh, I also attended the service at Small Park on Monday with Councillor Frizzle. And last week I attended UBCM amongst the couple of busy days of work since I got back this week. I left all my notes on my desk at home, so I will catch everyone up to speed on the October 4th meeting. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sim. Um, thanks very much. Not a, a whole lot to report. Um, just really I had the opportunity to host all the physicians um, for dinner, which was really fun. And uh, we did get to have um, a Nigerian or a taste of Nigeria, uh, which was which was really great. So it was just a, a lovely time. And I was grateful that the fire ban was off and just be able to treat the, the kids to s'mores and um, just a, a nice you know, fun local experience, uh, which was great. Just looking forward, um, things like uh, Games Night um, for Valley Pride, that's happening on Monday down at the Ski Hill. So that's gonna be uh, terrific. Um, and just a lot of gratitude for the Harvest Fair uh, this past weekend that went on and certainly inspired a lot of smiles. Um, and uh, just to say that this community is a great community and there's lots and lots of things uh, that are happening. And as we move into an election season is, is just to really get to know one another and, and see where we're at in, in growing forward. Um, and uh, I, I hope that we can just take the momentum of all the good people of this community and, and uh, continue to leaning in on that. That's it, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Sim. Uh, and my report, um, so uh, attended the Harvest Fair, um, William got runner up on the Beast uh, Vegetable Competition, so he's super excited about that. Uh, so thank you for everyone who organized that, it's a great event, great way to get all the gardeners involved um, and somewhere for me to bring my extremely large zucchini, uh, leave it and run. Uh, uh, we have the spelling bee tonight for Razor Reader, so I'll be helping out at that um, and looking forward to that event. Always fun, um, uh, especially the balloon popping, uh, my favorite part. Uh, and um, similar to Councillor Sim, I'm excited for the board game night. Um, 
you know, Valley Pride, uh, it's, it's an open event for anybody, whether you're a member of Valley Pride or whether you're just a member of the community and wants to come out and have some fun with some board games. Um, Valley Pride is, is all about inclusion and community for all. Um, and so really excited to, to go along, make some new friends uh, and hopefully beat everyone at Scrabble. Okay, um, so moving on, we have Committee of the Whole reports. Uh, so the <laughs> The first one is me. Uh, the next meeting is September the 20th, uh, which is today, actually coming up shortly. Um, and so there's a recommendation here that council enter a committee of the whole of the government operations committee. So I'm most, um, I, I, I don't know if I can move that because I'm the chair. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Moved by <laughs> Councillor Frizzle, seconded by Councillor McKenzie, all those in favor. And I guess I just keep the chair. Is, okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, item 14.2 uh, financial plan schedule. Um, and I'll pass that over to Director of Finance. Good afternoon. Um, the Director of Finance is here today. Uh, she's going to Um, so basically, the green on the schedule is where we need to uh, make decisions and, and to have workshops and, and everything else in between staff operations and staff work. Uh, and we have some blanks as to the specific dates as we go into 2023. Uh, where are where the dates will fall, but we, we can bring an updated version of that uh, as we move through this. Any questions of staff from council? Sure. Seeing none. Uh, so we, we do have, um, a recommendation that the Government Operations Committee recommend that Council approve the 2023 financial plan schedule as attached. Uh, is, does, can anyone move that recommendation? Councillor McKenzie, seconded by Councillor Frizzle. Uh, all those in favour? Thank you very much. Um, so moving on to 14.3, the draft Council procedure bylaw. Uh, Am I, is this coming to you, Mr. Thomas? Okay, thank you. At an earlier meeting, uh, Council had requested staff work on preparing a procedure bylaw for Council consideration, uh, which also specifically addressed the start time moving from 2 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. We have used that opportunity to, the current bylaw has been in place, I believe, since 2015 and has had sorry, 2014, and has had uh, four amendments since. We also looked at what other processes needed to be streamlined with the way that council functions. And the result is what's before you, which is a combination of existing practices within the current procedure bylaw, uh, reviews of best practices in uh, BC local government, uh, some of the materials supported by LGMA and other examples of uh, recent and updated uh, procedure bylaws and other community plans of similar size and, and context. Would the committee or council wish for me to go through specific components or the whole thing or whichever? Does anybody have a particular preference? Do we, do we want to focus in perhaps on things that have changed? Um, is yeah, that? Stick with the changes. Uh, okay. Sure, I'll walk you through. Table of content, page two. We've expanded on some of the definitions within the uh, procedure bylaw. We've included things such as uh, definitions for administration, um, CAO workshop, council workshop, um, the 
deferring, which is also included in the, cur in the current procedure bylaw. Delegation, electronic rulings, UBCM, FCM, some of those materials have already been in the bylaw. Officers of the corporation, the district does have a delegation uh, bylaw in place, which is separate from the procedure bylaw, but it's related to the functions of council. And so we have identified who the officers of the, of the corporation are. Uh, public notice posting place, again, that's something that's currently in the existing procedure bylaw. However, in the new bylaw, we took a different approach on creating a schedule at the end of the bylaw because council may, or the corporate officer may want to designate additional areas as a public notice posting place rather than having it hard coded within the bylaw itself. Going back to the table of content, the structure of the of the draft procedure bylaw has a general application for things that are generally applicable to the entirety of meetings of council, whether it be regular, special, or whether it be um, committee of the whole as an example. We have an application of the rules, which is on page seven of that document. And that basically says the provisions of this bylaw governs uh, meeting of councils, committees, as a, and committees as applicable. Uh, where, there, where this bylaw is silent on a particular issue, there are a couple of options to council. Council can create the rules relevant to that particular issue or rely on the Robert Rules of Order. However, the reliance on Robert Rules of Order cannot be inconsistent with what's in the bylaw itself. Under suspension of the rules, so council um, for sure has the authority to decide if and when uh, it will suspend the application of the rules temporarily to deal with a matter. Um, in the cases of a council workshop, uh, this bylaw prescribes that the rules will be suspended uh, for that particular meeting. Speaking of council workshop, there is a definition in the definition section of what a council meeting is. This was the result of lots of work because there is often question, well, if all members of council are present at an event, does that constitute a council meeting? With this definition, there are very clear conditions that has to be met in order for a meeting to be determined a council meeting. So the four conditions are, uh, the members of council will have to be invited which resulted in a quorum being formed, which is four or more members of council. The second condition, the discussions of the member of council pertain to the business of the district uh, or a matter that interests council. So discussions about any other thing is not creating a situation where a council meeting is actually forming. The third condition, the discussion could be seen to be making uh, a decision or moving towards making a decision. And fourth, the decision or the discussion is a material part of council decision-making process. So unless those four conditions have met, which typically occurs in a formal council meeting, uh, those sessions, those occasions where members of council gather together will not be defined as a council meeting. And that's a very important definition to have and threshold to have, and this has been research in depth to make sure it is actually um, compliant with the law. Going back to council workshop, because there is a requirement of open council meeting in the community charter or a requirement to be open to the public except if it's closed under section 90 or 92 of the community charter, this council workshop format will include include opportunities where council can ask about the current policies, bylaw, operations, or matters uh, of interest to the District of Clearwater, which will mean meeting the threshold of a council meeting. The purpose of a council workshop is to be more informal, which is why the recommendation is to suspend the rules uh, mm -hmm. so that council can have informal discussion. The next part is designating acting mayor. This is something we do on a regular basis uh, in conformance with our current procedure bylaw. Uh, nothing substantially new there, except to add 
what happens in the event the office of the mayor is vacant, which is important to consider at that point. Uh, this is leaning on the precedence and direction from the community charter as well. Authority of the presiding officer, the presiding uh, member is responsible for the conduct of the meeting and is responsible to make sure that it occurs in a certain way. Revision and consolidation of ballot policies, et cetera. This was something we had flagged earlier this year when we noticed, when there was a question of if we had a different reference on a bylaw for a particular year, for example, if we were meeting to say financial capital plan 2022, when in fact this is at 21, did council have the actual authority to expend those monies? Uh, working with her team, we have identified the, the regulations from the province that allows council to make minor adjustments to bylaws and policies as the case may be. This is not new to the District of Clearwater in the sense of not in the context of consolidating bylaws, but uh, it does provide the structure and the process by which uh, minor amendments can be made and the obligation to report to council when such decisions are made. Code of conduct, the province has passed a new requirement this year, I believe, or late last year, that every council must, every new term of council must consider a code of conduct matters and decide if they're gonna develop one. These general items in here, some of which are already reflected in the current procedure bylaw, is also reflected here. And just provides a general framework for some baseline expectations for conduct uh, during a meeting which is not only limited to members of council, but also staff and any delegations who come before council or a member of the public who provides them. Delegation to the CAO. The CAO has the legislative authority to be the single employee of council, but also the person responsible for the overall operation of the municipality already. Um, this would include human resources matters for all staff. However, I am putting, recommending that council adopts this with the specific delegation of HR related matters, except for the CAO, which council would, would retain uh, decision-making authority over. Uh, just added clarity. Uh, professional development for members of council. This was something that was discussed at uh, a session with UBCM that I participated in, and I thought it would be important enough to propose it for council. This is not obligating council to have to take professional development, but it provides the entitlement for council to do so, and a process where council can budget for that specific reason. At the end of this document, there is a proposed list of items uh, which will fall into the category of professional development, including conferences, seminars, meetings uh, pertaining to municipal affairs. This is a very broad and general context. Coursework, if council so wish to take coursework, uh, including strategic planning, governance, parliamentary procedures, truth and reconciliation, first nation history, finance, media communication. These are all things that members of council uh, may touch on in their particular duties. And it also leaves a, a very broad area for any other program material activity that may enable a member of council to effectively do their roles. Staff has the same requirements or or into opportunities internally to take professional development as well. Electronic meetings with the advent of uh, the pandemic, electronic meetings. Sorry, just getting an email, an urgent email from BC Hydro that we're expecting a localized power outage possibly at four o'clock today. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll get in there and read it and update you, but okay. yeah, we may have a power yeah. outage. Electronic meetings part of the uh, new process as a result of COVID. Inaugural meeting is already part of the current procedure bylaw. So, so excuse me, Mr. Thomas. Given that, do we want like do we want to switch to whether council have questions or concerns like, or? Yes. Like I know we originally said we'll go through the changes, but um, do we want to expedite um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll read it out loud. Good <laughs> afternoon. Due to damage on one of the poles on our transmission line, we'll making the emergency. We've taken an emergency power outage this afternoon from approximately 4 p.m. to 5:30 p.m. Uh, this outage will impact all our customers from barrier to veil mount. We apologize for this inconvenience. So, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, I'm, I'm still chairing because we're in the government committee of the whole. You absolutely <laughs> keep going with what you're doing. Uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, preference for, do we keep going? Do we just keep going until the power goes? If Casa has any specific questions about any areas, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay. Any questions on the draft council procedure bylaw? I see uh, Councillor Sim came on video. Uh, do you have a question for us, Councillor Sim? <laughs> Is that shaking? I can't. You're too. You're too small um, up there. <laughs> no, no questions. I read through the report this morning, and and it was great. Great work that was done. So thank you. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Everyone happy with the time change, which was probably the, the biggest, most impactful for council. <laughs> Big thumbs up from Council Mackenzie there. Um, so I think that's probably the most, sorry, I say impactful uh, to the councillors, <laughs> making sure that they can be at the meeting. Um, Councillor Taylor. Yes, uh, if I if I could ask a question, because council had operated for several years where an in camera could be held differently, and then we moved to a system where the council meeting was then needed to move in camera. Uh, Mayor Blackwell, I'm not too sure how the TNRD operates, if they do in camera before meetings or after meetings. I do know at the school board, we do them before. I was just curious if there was, you know, just a double check. Um, about some options. So maybe that there would be an in-camera at 5.30 as opposed to after uh, a meeting. That was my only question on that. Did you- I will leave that to staff to clarify, but uh, TNRD has them after regular meetings. Okay, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Uh, once council convenes a meeting, it has to be open to the public. From that point on, council can decide to close a session of the meeting uh, to go into camera. Alternatively, council can structure a separate meeting, which would be closed to the public uh, prior to the start of the regular council meeting, but that would be treated as a special council meeting. Um, this proposed bylaw does allow council to reorder items on the agenda if it deems it necessary for the efficient operation of the meeting. And so technically what can happen is a, a meeting is open, council goes into in camera, and, or oh, sorry, the meeting is open, council reorders the item on the agenda, then goes into in camera before dealing with the regular business. But it would still start at 6.30 p.m. in that case. The alternative, have a separate meeting that starts early. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my reaction is just thinking through implications for people who turn up from the public that would straight away be asking them to step out <laughs> and then come back, um, that, that might, prove the challenging aspect. If I may? Yes, you may. Okay, thank you. Uh, in the past, we, we did have a separate meeting um, that started uh, an hour before council meetings for in-camera. Then we made sure that our, our in-camera would run out before the regular meeting started at seven. So we have done it that way in the past, but I still think it needs to be looked in to see if it's legal, feasible, kosher, Okay, so given that, um, and given that the recommendation is that it would still be a draft procedure by law for consideration without amendment, or is it, or would that be the then become the bylaw? Sorry, I'm I'm just looking at the wording. It says that staff bring forward the draft for consideration, but is this not the draft? It is a draft, I and mean, it will be the draft until finalized, but. Uh... We're just looking for direction whether the text reflects the direction of council and the council is satisfied to move forward with actually bringing it uh, on the agenda for first, second, and third reading with the appropriate notice being provided to the public. So would that option still give time to respond to the proposals for how in-camera should be treated? Yeah. 
Yes, it can. Um, okay. What we could do is put it on the agenda for at the next regular meeting. Uh, we require two weeks notice of the meeting to the public. And uh, we can provide a report at that point or, or um, circulate the information prior to, but with respect to the in-camera complaint. Great, thank you. All right, Councillor Sim, would that satisfy your yeah, question? thank you. Thank you very much. I think we just have to look into it just to make sure that we're uh, looking at all aspects. Thanks. Okay, so given that, if there's no other questions or comments, um, is there somebody who would like to make the recommendation, um, either option one or option two? Move option one. Okay. Second. Second by um, Mayor, I was going to call you Councillor. <laughs> Mayor Blackwell, uh, all, all, oh, any discussion, I should ask. Seeing none, all those in favor, and that passes. Uh, so there's no recommendation here, but I'm gonna assume I should make, someone should make a recommendation to rise from the committee of the hall. <laughs> it can't be me. Uh, moved. Seconded. <laughs> all those in favor. And pass it back to Mayor Blackwell. Thank you. Took longer than I thought. So uh, if you're doing your bank account for your election uh, account, expect yourself to be there for 30 to 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> item 14.4, Community and Economic Development and Infrastructure. Chair Bamford is away. Next meeting is November 1st. Item 14.5, Parks and Rec, Social Development. Councillor Sim. Uh, if I could turn that over to you, thank you. Yeah, sure, no problem. Next meeting, October 4th. Um, no standing committee reports, select committee reports, trails task force, uh, Councillor Taylor. The next meeting is October 11th. Uh, community, community Economic Development Task Force, Councillor Frizzle. To be announced. Uh, and then there's Cemetery Advisory Committee. Next meeting is October 11th. Uh, we have committee representation reports, anything from Tourism Wells Gray, uh, Councillor Sim. We, I know we have a new manager. We do, and they've called a meeting for uh, September the 26th that will be in person at the DLCC. Excellent, thank um, you. Uh, Councillor Frizzle, you have more on that? I, uh, are you going to be back, Councillor Sim? I will be back, but I think it would be great if you went. I have been invited in your stead as you may just, they were told you were just returning. So if you're not going to- Yeah, I think that that's a great idea. I think it'll be really nice to, to, to meet the people and I've appreciated your, your contributions there. Thank you. Uh, there is nothing on the Wells Gray Community Forest Commission coming up. Staff reports 18.1, 111 to 130 in your package on the flag policy. And I'm glad we've got this work done. Uh, Ms. Bystead, you come up. Yeah, catch up on my agenda paper. There we go. Look at that. I love you guys. Look at how much got done while I was gone. <laughs> Blackwell, uh, what you have in front of you is uh, an updated flag pro uh, protocol policy. Um, and uh, it was good timing uh, recently with the uh, unfortunate, uh, with the sovereign where we actually had to uh, reflect on this. So it stood us in good stead. Um, it is an update. It's pretty much a wholesale update. Uh, there isn't a lot left from the other one. There was a number of things that needed to be updated, including lines of responsibility, um, as well as we've included uh, some features around a flag protocol, or a courtesy flag, pardon me, um, which um, I'll talk about in a moment. There are also a couple areas for council um, to make a couple determinations. If you look on the level of responsibility, um, both on uh, point number two, and then again in the courtesy section, we have corporate services um, being involved in a number of uh, decision making. Um, and what we need to consider is if council wanted to be involved in any of those levels of decision making um, or not. Most of these are fairly typical administrative, but um, it is up to council to uh, determine if, if they want corporate services to have 
um, all of that or if they want to be involved at any level. Um, so I will, uh, so I just wanted to flag that huh. as a, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Um, so, uh, so at this time, if you have any questions, I'd be delighted to talk through the policy. We are recommending two things um, for the, oh, I did want to talk about the, the courtesy flags. We are recommending approval of the policy um, as well as some budget discussion for the planning of two community flagpoles. The community flagpoles are in relation to the courtesy flags. And what's happened is we currently have no, um, we have the ability to, to if, if the community requests, or I'll, I'll use Valley Pride as an example, if we wanted to, or, or the upcoming um, uh, Truth and Reconciliation, if we wanted to flag those flags, we actually in the old policy didn't have a process for doing that. So we've been able to bring in from the government in, of BC, the Office of Protocol, and the federal government their rules of flying a flag in which they have very specific um, rules on how to change the flag when you don't have enough flag poles so that you can fly all the flags that are necessary. Um, so at this moment, we have um, a process in, in this policy for the inclusion of, uh, of flag, courtesy flagpoles and flying courtesy flags. We are recommending that through the budget process, we look at installing two additional flagpoles as courtesy flagpoles so that we can have one here at the district um, and one potentially at the sportsplex, depending on how that cost breaks out. Um, and that gives us sort of that separate provision so that um, the parks department isn't always having to move flags around, but we can have a designated flagpole for that purpose. Um, so the policy um, outlines um, the procedures for the approval of a courtesy flag, what the requirements would be, um, and, and then kind of the purpose behind it. So any questions? Any questions? Uh, Councillor Sim, are you raising your hand there? Yeah, I think my, my question would be is if it's just corporate services or is there anything prudent to also include the parks manager, uh, even with you know the recent um, protocols with the sovereign, um, does it, is it helpful to have a, a second party involved with that or does that complicate it? Yeah, so, so the, the process right now um, includes, it starts with corporate services, it moves to the Department of Operations and Infrastructure, which includes Park and Rec. Um, there is a role for the fire department as well. So, so this lays out who is responsible for what, how, how quickly you communicate, and who's responsible. So corporate services um, is, is kind of the, the quarterback. So they're going to lead off any applications for half-masting. You know, so with with the recent um, uh, Queen, uh, Corporate Services was the one who, who started the policy and said, okay, this has happened. This is what our policy says we need to do next. So that still remains, but we don't raise and lower the flags. That, that's Parks and Rec. So, you know, it's, it's Corporate Services job then to notify the next person on the list of what, of, of, you know, tag it off to them. And so that's part of what is in this new policy then is who, who's doing what in terms of responsibilities, because that is not laid out in the old policy. Anything further? Thank you. No, I, I love this. I think this clarifies things uh, wonderfully. Um, I love the idea of courtesy flag polls. I think that solves a lot of problems. The flags are a very sensitive subject with some of the members of our community as far as uh, heights of flags, uh, what flags hang together on poles, and uh, I don't want to be something hung on a flagpole, so I think this is a great idea. Um, so you're recommending, uh, there's two recommendations here, is that what we're going with? Yeah, so I'm recommending approval, and then recommending it be um, that plans for the placement of two additional flagpoles be forwarded to the budget plan. For 2023. Cool. Uh, somebody wanted to move recommendation one. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor uh, 
McKenzie. All those in favor? That passes. Uh, recommendation two that flags this not be instructed to include plans and placement of two unity flags. Somebody want to move? Moved by Councillor Taylor, seconded by Councillor Frizzle. All those in favor? And that passes. Thank you for that excellent report. I love the level of detail on that. Thank you. Okay, that moves us to our favorite discussion, which is permissive tax exemptions, uh, 131 to 134 in your package. And uh, Ms. Glasses, fire away on your report on this. Mayor Council, today I'll present to you um, tax exemptions. Um, today we're asking Council to direct staff to prepare a permissive tax exemption bylaw for the property we have in your package. These properties are all, um, uh, sorry, the bylaw will be from 2023 to 2027. They're all for churches. Um, the way that churches work typically are the, the building, the church itself, and the stance underneath is already statutorily exempt. This uh, permissive tax exemption typically is for landscaping or a parking lot around the building. So that the value of the permissive tax exemption is relatively small. And uh, I've followed the process we followed last year or prior years is five years for these exemptions. Um, we notified all the churches that had the exemption prior. There was, uh, I think, Questions on that? Further comments from staff? Okay. Uh, we do have a bylaw. Are we reading first reading of this bylaw? Is that the intent here? So, sorry, this one. Yeah. Uh, item 18.2. Yeah. Is just to direct staff to prepare the bylaw for the current year. Okay, so that's the recommendation. Moved by that. Seconded Second. by Councillor McKenzie. All those in favor? That passes. And the bylaw is just in there for reference at this point. Is it okay? Thank you. There is an, another. There is another bylaw uh, per amendment in 19.1. We'll okay, maybe that's that. what I'm seeing here. Um, okay, so we're going to move to the late item 18.3 uh, financial plan policy. So we have a draft copy here. Go ahead whenever you're ready. I'll speak to this. In the prior council meeting, we brought the draft financial plan policy to council. We have made one um, edit to include the staff prepared community survey on it. We hey, so it's just 18. 8.2, the last item on the, I just realized I didn't have my mic on, so I'm just saying that from my mic. Um, so are we adopting this today? Okay, so we have a motion to adopt this. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Taylor, all those in favor? That passes, thank you. Um, and then for information, 18.4, you have on table uh, mm -hmm. a report from our economic development officer on all the grants and exciting things that she's been uh, working on the last little while. Um, you've all just had basic time to digest this, but are there any questions of uh, Ms. Bystead on any of this? Thank you for putting this out. Uh, you're welcome. Thank yeah. Uh, Councillor Sim? Uh, yeah, that was a really nice summary and it was really nice to, to see and certainly good to see that uh, some of the grants that are flowing into the community. What I am uh, wondering about is, is what are some of your, your forward projects that you're getting excited about uh, taking on and will you be um, addressing any of the uh, projects as outlined in the economic development um, uh, report that had been done? So that was a two-parter. Um, <laughs> um, so the 
so some of the grants that we've been successful at, so the age friendly, the healthy public policy, and the Etsy one, um, have all been reflective of direction provided within the economic development strategy. So uh, the strategy um, has a number of um, you know activities and recommendations that it has made in excess of, of well over 100, um, covering six different sectors. Um, one of the things the task force did at one of our initial meetings back in June was we looked at a couple of those categories and narrowed down some areas of focus. So we've been able to use those as some guidelines for developing uh, grant applications moving forward. So the age-friendly one is looking at uh, transportation and resource directories for older adults. Um, the public policy will look at a uh, policy framework for wellness and recreation programming. Um, and the economic strategy um, is going to comprise a suite of information that uh, looks at a formal business walk and, and process that will be happening on October 19th. Um, and there are some additional activities around that, and that'll be resulting um, in using, um, it's a, a reporting platform called Executive uh, Pulse. Um, and that will provide some um, data uh, that will be reflected on our website, on the economic pages. Um, so that'll be open and transparent, but will provide some really interesting statistical information and some comparisons with other communities. Um, as part of that uh, grant, there'll be um, a development of a land and building registry, some developers toolkits, and then some success, whew, some success stories. Um, so that'll be involving some videography and some community, um, uh, community stories of, of success of people who have moved here and they've tried things and you know how much they love it, but from that business perspective. Um, and so these are all things that have come from that economic development strategy that are all included in that. Um, it does take time to develop. Once you have the recommendation, it takes time to develop um, the process and the strategy that you're gonna follow to actually get there. Um, and so we've been able to do that. We've got grants now, so we have money to actually implement many of these recommendations. Um, and so I think that's the exciting thing for me going forward. We're currently uh, looking at, um, there's a number of intakes happening this fall. So in terms of grant processes, so we're going through them to take a look at what grants are applicable to which recommendations that it makes sense in terms of staff capacity, um, what departments that they may um, uh, impact, you know, everything from, uh, you know, fire smarting to, um, you know, business resiliency and, and more training and what does that all look like? So uh, there's lots of things happening in the world of grants that, that we hope to take advantage of. Um, and uh, yeah, what was the first part of that question? I'm sorry, counselor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm gonna stop you there because you've given such a fulsome answer and it's just such a delight to hear how you've been, you know, working with the plan and yet leaning into getting some grants and, and, and applying it and really marrying the two. I also wanna congratulate you on the BizPal. It was, it was super to see that the uh, province had actually issued a, a press release on that and just highlighting some of the good work you're doing. So um, thank you and thank you uh, for this great answer. It just really helps. Um, um, inform our community on the steps that are being taken under this portfolio. Thank you, thank you. If I could um, add one comment, I just wanted to make a note on um, committees. I, I am aware that there was a comment made on Facebook and there was a question. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I'm actually not a member of the Community and Economic Development and Infrastructure Committee. So um, they, they had included that, and I'm not on that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good to understand the internal structures and how it works yeah, yeah which is yeah. excellent is an excellent point but yes absolutely thank you for this uh, report are there further questions uh councillor Rizzle? i do have the one question under policies the thompson nicola intercommunity business license could you explain that to me oh that's a good I'd love one. to <laughs> <laughs> i uh, i was actually hoping to have that uh that ready for, for you today, that's been delayed, hoping to get it here for the next meeting. Working with the, 
working with the Ministry of Jobs and Economic Recovery and Resilience, the same ministry that does the Biz Help program. And the, inter, uh, the Thompson Nicola Intercommunity Business License Program is um, a network of municipalities within our region that so far we have not participated in. And it's a way for business licenses to be shared between communities. And that's a really poor explanation. We don't lose, we don't lose our own regular business licenses. We're being able, to, we're adding on a feature for uh, tradespeople or services that travel between communities. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so, Which I think is something that a lot of our, our local businesses have really wanted for years uh, so that, that, that everybody that's doing business in Clearwater is accountable for that. So, okay. Yes, and as, as, as the CEO has just reminded me, uh, we're updating our business license um, policies and bylaws as well. Um, and so we're introducing the ICBL before we introduce the business license update because we need to have that one in place so that we can make it part of the other document. Good point. Excellent, thank you. Very fulsome. Any, any further questions? No. Um, so then we are moving uh, on to the next page, which is that uh, bylaw that I was talking about, which I should have just flipped the page and read that I know this is the point that I'm supposed to read this. So 19.1, uh, there's a recommendation that the District of Clearwater Amendment Bylaw number 272-2022 to amend permissive tax exemption for nonprofit bylaw number 257-2021 be introduced and read for a first time. A move, uh, question or move, moved by Councillor Taylor, seconded by Councillor McKenzie. Now I get to read District of Clearwater bylaw number 272 2022, a bylaw to amend bylaw number 257 2021, a bylaw to provide permissive tax exemption for not for profit in accordance with section 224 of the community charter for a three year term. Whereas section 137 of the community charter provides that the power to adopt a bylaw includes the power to amend or repeal it. And whereas the council of the district of Clearwater wishes to amend bylaw number 257, 2021, a bylaw to provide permissive tax exemption for non-for-profit, not-for-profit in accordance with section 224 of the community charter for a three-year term. Now, therefore, the Council of the District of Clearwater in open meeting assembles and acts as follows. This bylaw may be cited as the District of Clearwater Amendment Bylaw Number 272-2022 to amend per permissive tax exemption for not-for-profit bylaw number 257-2021. All those in favor. Thank you. That passes. Uh, there is a, motion, a recommendation to read this for a second time. What is the... Second and third. Oh, second and third. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Taylor, seconded Second. by Councillor McKenzie. Drink of water. Uh, District of Clearwater, bylaw number 272, 2022, a bylaw to amend bylaw number 257, 2021, a bylaw to provide permissive tax exemption for not for profit in accordance with section 224 of the community charter for a three year term. Whereas section 137 of the community charter provides that the power to adopt a bylaw includes the power to amend or repeal it. And whereas the council of the district of Clearwater wishes to amend bylaw number 257, 2021, a bylaw to provide permissive tax exemption for not for profit in accordance with section 224 of the community charter for a three year term. Now, therefore, the Council of the District of Clearwater in open meeting assembles and acts as follows. This bylaw may be cited as the District of Clearwater Amendment Bylaw Number 272-2022 to amend permissive tax exemption for not-for-profit bylaw number 257-2021. All those in favor? And that passes. Thank you. Ooh. Uh, moving on, we have no correspondence required. We do have uh, information item, Thompson Nicola Regional District Building Inspection Services, August 2022. Um, comments from the public. Are there any comments from the public? Seeing none. 
Thank you to the public. We do need to move into an in-camera. Uh, that the meeting, there's a recommendation that the meeting be closed to the public pursuant to sections 90C of the community charter to discuss matters related to labor relations and other employee relations. Can I get a mover and a seconder on that? Moved by Councillor Frizzle, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favor? Uh, we will take a seven minute adjournment and come back at 335.